Yeah, as we know, there is the 70% of the technical performance, 30% of the athletic performance. Her choice of cutter for this bronze medal match is Papure. Wasim was the silver medalist in Gaziantep in Turkey at the European Championships. Her opponent, Shimitsu. Natsuki, the 25-year-old from Japan, her choice of kata, Suprempe. Each of the athletes are wearing a different color belt. You can see here, Papuren and uh, Dalara Bosson. She's wearing the red belt and Shimizu Natsuki performing Super MP. She's wearing the blue. Red always goes first. So, Mohammed, how do you feel about going first or second? Uh, well, actually, uh, it's a nice question. Uh, if you say like in the individual, Sometimes uh, maybe it's better to go Akka, sometimes it's better to go Ao, so it depends on the match, on the athlete you are playing against. Uh, for me, if you ask me, like I would like to go Akka in the individual, uh, it feels like better to perform in the beginning. So if, uh, if you are unfamiliar with the terms uh, of karate, the, the language you used is Japanese, and Akka means red, and Ao means blue. Exactly. First up, Dilara Bosson, her choice of kata, Papuren, she's seated number six. She's already performed Anandai and Kurarumpa and Papuren in the round robin. So, Mohammed, can you tell us a little bit about Papuren and what we should be looking out for? Uh, well, Papuren is one of uh, the strongest uh, katas for the Shitori style. Uh, you can see speed in the beginning, you can see like uh, the athletes perform in a very speed way in the beginning. They use uh, their advantage to show uh, speed and uh, power at the same time. So uh, this is the advantage of this kata for me. Uh, I guess like female, they use it more than the male. Uh, it looks maybe better on them. So uh, yeah, as I said, it's a very strong kata for the medal boards. And you mentioned earlier, didn't you, about the technical performance and the athletic performance. Can you just explain a little uh, more about that? Uh, yeah, uh, uh, the, the referees, they have like 70% on the technical performance, 30% on the athletic performance, uh, where you have to focus more on uh, your technique uh, and uh, all about the kata. So your athletic performance should also be uh, a very high level, but uh, you know, when you have the a good uh, doing a good job in your uh, technical performance which will give you more advantage so even though uh, you are uh, at the end of the match you are tied with your opponent so the referees will go back to see the technical performance so we always have to focus on that uh, because kata is effectively a technical discipline exactly and kata can be found in in, in a number of martial arts judo uh, aido and uh, but also outside of karate uh, or outside of the martial arts, kata can also be found in theatre in Japan and in ceremonies such as the child ceremony, the charo, the tea ceremony. So it's a, it's a very important part of the story of how karate, how karate has been passed down through the years, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. I agree with you. Kata is art, you know. So. <laughs> It's not just a performance you go inside to do. It's like uh, it makes you feel good. It makes you uh, feel strong at the same time. So uh, kata is something really special. It's the basics, 
the basic of karate, like even the kumite athletes, they all need to do kata to have a very good technique while they are doing the kumite. And your opinion of the performance from Galara Bosson? Uh, amazing performance, actually. Uh, you can see a very good balance. You can see uh, strong techniques, uh, nice athletic performance. So in my point of view, it's a very nice cut. So there we have it. Shimizu Natsuki is uh, going to be up against it when she performs her kata. You talked about feeling good. You must have felt incredibly well when you were on the tatami in the Budokan, the yeah. Olympic Games in Tokyo 2022, uh, well 2020. Yeah, actually, that was uh, the best stage of my life to be at the Olympic Games. You know, it's a dream came true. I was working hard for like five years, trying my best to qualify to this big event. And finally, I was lucky and I was so happy to be there. So that's the best feeling ever to be there on the tatami in front of the million, million of people who are watching you. And this athlete, no doubt, would have loved to have been there and perhaps maybe in the future, who knows? 25 years old, plenty of time, because karate's kata discipline, <laughs> athletes can go on for quite some time, can't they, Mohammed? Uh, yeah, of course. So, uh, let's say in kata, whenever you are older, uh, you have more experience, uh, you can understand the kata more. So, like when you are 25 years old, it's just you are so young, you know, you have more um, all the time for you coming. If you see the athletes in the Olympic Games, for example, uh, for example, Sandra Sanchez, she was, uh, I guess, 39 or 40 years old yes. when she got the gold medal. So, yes. this is a big lesson for all of us that and she went on it's not to win all about the uh, age. Exactly, and she went on to win the world championships for a second time. Exactly. Phenomenal. She's the only athlete in karate who have won all the gold medals. Unfortunately um, for us, but um, perhaps time for a, a rest for Sandra. She's decided to retire from competition. And uh, who's going to take up the mantle now? Uh, well, actually, this is for sure a very sad news. Uh, Sandra, she's a very good friend of, uh, of me and my twin Salman. She's amazing athletes inside the tatami, outside the tatami. She's so kind. Uh, she's a real le legend, you know, in all in everything she do. So uh, there are so many good athletes now. Uh, it's so difficult to, to think who going to be next. But uh, uh, I think maybe one of the Japanese will be the next one. But as I said, there are so many good athletes coming. And we are witnessing one of those Japanese athletes right now with Super Empei and Shimizu Natsuki. Let's have a look and see how her kata is developing. Tremendous line with those heels and the feet position in the stances. And this is Shikodachi, the straddle stance. your opinion so far between both these athletes going for bronze medal? Uh, well, they actually are doing, 
Dilard is a good cutter, and also Natsuki Muzu, she's doing a very good cut. Actually, Super MP is uh, one of the strongest cutters. So uh, it's difficult to say who's better, but I can see uh, really nice cutters from both, from both of them. And, and I'm glad that you uh, acknowledge people to tell yeah. who is better. And that's the, the job of those seven judges. And they'll each put in two scores, one for athletic, one for uh, technical performance. And the top two and the bottom two are taken away and the result is the score that's given to the athletes. And it is going to be difficult because both of these performed incredible catters. And it was excellent stances. Yeah, exactly. So, like, in my opinion, maybe you can see the athletic performance from the Turkish uh, athlete, and you can see maybe more of the technical performance of the Japanese. But uh, in the end, it's a difficult uh, decision. So, let's see. Will it be red or will it be blue? What would you go for if you were a judge? Uh, Mohammed, putting you on the spot. We have the technical performance and athletic performance. We see here ahead is Shimizu Natsuki. You're correct about the technical performance. What about the athletic performance? She was ahead on that as well. 18.34 against 17.92. So you may well be right again uh, because it is Shimizu Natsuki who takes the bronze medal. Nice performance, nice cutters. And very good points also for both of them. Well, we're going to have an opportunity now, Mohammed, because in uh, you were the uh, you were the athlete who was on the tatami as the the co as the uh, athlete in the Olympic Games, and your brother Salman, who we'll have a chat with in just a few moments, was your coach. So, how did you feel he performed as a coach? <laughs> See, actually. Uh, whenever when I got the news to the, from my Olympic committee, Kuwait Olympic committee, that I have been qualified to the Olympic Games, they asked me one question. They told me, uh, "What do you need until we are in Tokyo for the Olympic Games?" It was like there was like let's say one month or one month and a half uh -huh. until that time. And I asked them, "I don't need anything. I don't need any training camp. Anything. I just need my twin to be with me." Yeah!